What's going on, Reef Builders? I am Jake Adams here at EcoDeck headquarters. And normally when I get some new products from EcoTech Marine and some other companies, I like to do a teardown. But today, I'm doing something completely different. I'm gonna be building a product from scratch. And I got the president of EcoTech Marine. Yeah, Tim Marks. director of manufacturing. The point is that Tim handles a lot of the manufacturing. And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna just walk around before the assembly line for the Versa pump is ready. We're gonna walk around and we're gonna assemble the goods that go inside one of these devices and talk about the parts that put it together and why they matter and wh why and how this is very different from uh, a lot of other dosing pumps, right? Every dosing right. pump. <laughs> Every dosing pump. All right, all right, what do you wanna do? Well, how do you wanna start? Um. All right, well, let's go to the mill. We'll start with the rotor, which is kind of the, the bread and butter of uh, what makes a dosing pump work. This is the business end. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, basically what we do is we start with our rotor assembly. Is that CNC mill over here? Yep, CNC right. mill. Um, we're still in the early stages of production, so I haven't fully tooled up and I'm only running two parts at a time right now, but we'll get we'll get a lot more. You press the go button. And what we're doing now is putting a very precise bore down the center of the rotor. Uh, the purpose of this bore is to accept two sealed and greased ball bearings. So one thing that people don't understand is like, once the product is designed, someone has to figure out how to get it made efficiently, quickly, and without any faults. And so, and so yeah, so that's kind of his job. He engineers how the products get made. Get manufactured. But, yeah. All right, and then there's a quality check right off the bat. Um, a uh, no-go plug gauge and a go plug gauge. So one has to go inside and one is not able to go inside of the hole. And that is controlled, these are controlled within one thousandth of an inch. So a human hair is three thousandths of an inch in diameter. The bore of this is controlled within one thousandth of an so inch. you did just now, you just shaved off a tiny little bit. Yeah. <laughs> So the next step is, uh, and again, we're not we're not fully tooled up at the production stage yet. Yeah, this is uh, almost like experimentation, right? Well, we're With done. We're done with the specs and the manufacturing method, but we haven't we haven't actually like uh, multiplied it times ten, so to speak. So the next step is we take these precision uh, greased and sealed ball bearings, and um, we'll install them onto a uh, custom arbor on this little arbor press. Nothing special in this particular case. In there. And just press it in, and that's all it takes. And the, the fit, um, which is referred to as the press fit, um, the overlap, the interference between the plastic and the uh, ball bearing is what we have engineered and are inspecting when we use the gauges. Okay. So that makes the rotor. In our case, the rotor incorporates a ring gear okay. and is driven by a, pin, uh, a motor that drives a pinion and a planet gear. And what makes the Vectra unique is that the Motor shaft also acts as the axis of rotation for the rotor. So the rotor goes on top and they all spin. I wish audience. people could feel this because you can just feel all the tiny little steps in the motor just, but as you turn it, it's just, 
yeah. just kind of has like a resonance with the, the magnetic field. So that is because it's it's a stepper motor design. This is, is a gearbox. I removed the planet gear and just spinning it, you know, it'll, it'll sit there and spin for a very long time, very little run out. And that precision nature of this assembly is what we designed and engineered. And that's, that's really what makes us who we are is that this is not an off the shelf dosing pump at all. This is designed from the ground up. This is our motor design. I mean, even the- Well, I've never seen a pancake style uh, stepper motor. So now that we have the assembly, you know what? Um, okay, so now that we have the assembly, uh, or at least now that you've seen the, the main assembly, which is the motor and the rotor, we can go out to the assembly line and grab some other parts and turn this into a pump. So this is the uh, future site where the Versa dosing pump is going to be assembled, but right now it's not fully set up. Again, we're just wrapping up the manufacturing um, details. This has been used kind of just for testing in the meantime. And these are components sitting in inventory and ready to go. Um, but what I'll do is I'll grab the parts that, that we need to actually create a Versa. Let's actually go to quality for the rest of the parts because otherwise I'll probably get in trouble for rating the assembly line. <laughs> so now we're over where quality control happens. You have uh, most of the major parts you need right here? Yeah, I pulled more or less everything out. Um, we'll know if I missed anything while, while we're doing it. You'll have to forgive me if I do a few things out of order. Um, essentially what we do first is we install the peristaltic tubing itself onto the uh, tubing um, carrier. This is what makes a peristaltic pump work. Some fancy little clamps you got there. Oh yeah, they are. So is that gonna be a replaceable part? Just that whole little assembly right there? Yeah, the whole assembly. And there's actually three different versions of it. So the pump will come with the barbed version that you see here, but there will also be a version that comes with female push to connects already installed. And a third version that comes with push to connect elbows already installed. So that's the tubing assembly. Um, next thing we will do is install the actual motor. This right here is not an off-the-shelf motor. No, it's not at all. Logo, it's got the number. Well, and it's more than that. It's our design. It's our um, molds, our tools. It's you know our uh, winding that we we engineered for the requirements that we need. Um, you know, again, we really we do not just put things together. Um, we design them. Let's put some stuff together. Get my orientation. I like the clamps that you put on here. Mm -hmm. It's a small little thing, but I've had these pop on other dosers before. Pop or they leak and, um, and can take air in, which makes for a less reliable uh, pump. Um, or I should say a less accurate this, pump. Are these are crimped or something? Yeah, that, that would be called a crimp fitting, yep. So right now what I'm doing is installing the motor into the actual housing with four screws. And you know, as you can tell, I'm not on an assembly line. I'm doing it by hand. For the actual manufacturing process of all of this, um, we provide tools and fixtures that make it a much more straightforward progress requiring less, uh, less time on the part of the operator. Crazy to me that this is all of the brains right here. Not just the brains, the wireless chips on there too. The brains, the power management. There's a motor driver, there's a microprocessor for the wireless. Um, and you get these uh, these blank circuit boards that are made by a, a contractor, right? Yeah, we get a, a panel of we get a panel of circuit boards themselves. Um, so I'm not sure how many are on a panel for a Versa pump, but it'll be, you know, this big and it'll be full of boards. And it's just boards. The, the substrate, and then you have a machine that does two machines. One that puts all the very small components on there, called the SNT machine, right? Two pick and place machines. One is primarily responsible for the uh, small components and it does so, it 
puts them on the board very quickly, and then one that's more about precision for microprocessors and larger odd shape parts. You make a lot of that, not, not from scratch obviously, but you make a lot of that yourself too. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we assemble the entire circuit board here in Pennsylvania and in Iowa, and um, and we're, we're manufacturing from raw components to finished circuit board thousands of PCBAs, printed circuit board assemblies every day. Yeah. Circuit power, board, uh, oops, I need the light pipe on it. That is all there is for the back of the pump, so the cover goes on. And I can go ahead and screw that in. All right, lid's on, we'll flip her over. Also, just a touch about the back. You've got uh, this weird wedge shape. Yeah, that's a cleat for mounting it to the wall. Um, I don't have one near me, but basically there's a little cleat that goes there that you screw into a stand or a wall, and then you can take the pump and just hang it right on it. Okay. Is that used in the base station too, or just for No, the in the case of the base station, this is removed. Uh, or they, I should say the cleat is not used. Um, and we use some of the geometry here, 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 and here to mount it. it. Yeah. yeah, and it's a spring-loaded clip, so you actually, it'll pop right onto the base station, and then to remove it, you actually push a button and pull it. And this is that little jack. That's the jack that is for the base station. That's the power jack right there. But when you have a base station, you don't need the power jack. Correct. It gets power from the base station. Yep, there's a I little. I love that so much. Yeah, so the base station, the advantage is you have one larger power supply versus four small power supplies. Cool. Um, so we got the back end. Did you forget to put this one? Oh no, this nope. is where it goes. Nope, so now we're on the front. The front, we're done with the back, we're on the front. This is the actual pump uh, side of things. So um, we're gonna uh, use some grease at this point. Grease. Yeah, it's not any grease, that's exactly right. And what you'll see again is our ball bearings. And I will slide the rotor on, give it a little spin to distribute the grease adequately. Um, the next thing you're going to see is the installation of the screw on the top. So I'll align the rotor, install this custom assembly fixture. Um, I'll change my bit out yet again. And I can come in with uh, this custom screw and I will assemble it to a specific torque. Um, and then next thing and last thing I should say is I'm gonna actually grease the rollers. In our accelerated wear testing, which is start-stop conditions and over um, a higher RPM than it would actually achieve in production, I mean, we probably have done 100 years worth of water changes and uh, it just works. With so. one pump. Yeah. That's and we've done so multiple times that's with multiple that's pumps. That's so. That's the advantage of having four ball bearings. There's two ball bearings in the motor, two ball bearings in the rotor. Um, engineered polymers for everything else that is incorporated. That's why we designed our own peristaltic pump versus uh, buying one off the shelf. Um, you buy one off the shelf and, uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of those products that you can buy if that's what you want, but that's not what we want. The last thing that goes on is the lid. Dude, I love the styling. <laughs> I really do love this time. So the hardware for this is completed. Yep. Right? Once you load it into our control uh, app, then you can program the pump and select rates and frequencies of dosing. You can create max dosages per day, um, catch up dosages. So say you are pumping 150 milliliters of calcium into your aquarium every day, but the power was out for eight hours and so your program didn't actually happen during the power outage. You can program how your pump behaves during the remaining um, uh, 16 hours of that day and tell it to evenly pump out the 150 milliliters so that to catch up. Um, we, we think that we've thought of most of the little things that a consumer, um, that you know, a reef aquarist in general uh, would need and our, in, as you know, we're all reef aquarists ourselves. So our testing has, um, you know, the, the needs of the product have come from our, the needs of us on our own aquariums. And I think that We've got some cool little tricks up our sleeves to, to make it do what you want it to do. Well, that was a very fun, informative, uh, 
the opposite of a teardown. We put together our own little Versa pump, and by we, I mean Tim. Tim did it. Um, I really want to thank Ecotech Marine for bringing me out, for having me out, and uh, Tim for his time in assembling this pump. This is going to be in its own league. This this dosing pump is going to be in its own league. If you feel the heft of this pump compared to a lot of others in the market, you're just going to realize this is a whole different animal. I cannot wait to see all the tricky stuff we collectively figure out to do with this. So, Tim, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Jake. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, please uh, subscribe, vote a like, uh, and comment if you have any questions. And we'll catch you guys on the next video. Thank you. Bye.